Hey, what is up, YouTube? All right, happy Inktober. Um, I'm I'm always impressed that, that people are so uh, excited to participate in Inktober. Although to me, it really is Drawtober. I'm not <laughs> because the the point of it is is not so much to ink something as to draw something in ink. But um, anyway, but I thought what I could do is I could give some people insight into inking. Um, different things. So this is a page. I've already inked this page for publication, but uh, when I had gone to get it printed, uh, they screwed up and uh, printed it on the wrong side of the board. I don't print my blue lines on the side of the board that has um, the indicia and all that stuff on it and the crop lines because uh, it's just more stuff to remove when I scan it and need to prepare it. So so I have this, but what, what I thought I would do is um, Ryan Pencil's pretty tight and honestly, most of his um, sculpting on figures and stuff like that is pretty well defined in like pretty graphic shape. All right, so what I did is, is I took I took some of Ryan's more um, hard edge lines and I just did it like a normal pencil would. I hopefully you can see this, but like right here. So like real sketchy lines. So, so essentially what ends up happening is um, if you did a sketch, like if you drew Batman and you were not really sure how to render things and you had gone in and done scribbly lines, there's a lot of different ways to interpret that stuff. And for me, even even inking my own stuff, because I have such a, a, a varied toolbox of like rendering techniques that I can do, um, you know, I really have to have a clear vision of what what style I'm going for, if that makes sense, like like my style. And and I, I've always had a bit of an identity crisis Um doing comic book work because of that it was easier for me to do the black drawings because it was completely un um chartered territory but but with comic books i started thinking like well should i do it like this should i do it like that and it can get more confusing so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to grab a brush um i'm using a winsor newton series seven uh number three uh, or yeah it's a three it's a pretty big brush all things considered but it gets a really good point. So I'm gonna show you how you could render something like this with a brush and kind of do, not necessarily feathery lines, but this could look like, um, these are pretty like, uh, I don't know, I consider them, um, what would you call it? Like, like cutting edge style inking. <laughs> so I'm not gonna ink it like a traditional brush inker where it's like real feathery, you know, like old school thing. I'm going for for like, you know, um, more of a, so I'm going to start really, really thin. I hold the brush like, um, like a boss. No, I, I hold the brush. <laughs> I just hold it how it's comfortable. Like if I was going to hold a pencil, I guess some people have pointed out that I hold it weird. I don't think I do, but I would, wouldn't probably be the best person to ask, but I've had people tell me that I hold it like, I don't know, some sort of Japanese pen or something. I, I really, it, it's not intentional. So anyway, as thin as possible on these first lines, like, like not as thin as possible, but I mean like thin, thin so that they show up and, um, it, like if you were going to print, they'd be very fine, but still print. And, and I'm, I'm drawing from the wrist. There's not a lot of finger motion. So it's not like, I'm not like, like this is all locked in and then this. So my hope is that these techniques will help you be able to achieve better results on your inktober pieces when you ink them. So now I'm starting to get a little thicker. It's like tiny, tiny bit thicker. And you can even um, uh, like like kind of press down a little bit, which I'm kind of doing, and then flick it. Press down a little and flick it. Press down a little and flick it. And then what I'm trying to do is I'm now I'm starting to consider the blend. So I want these lines to get a little closer together and a little thicker, a little closer together. I wouldn't normally draw them this slow, to be 100% honest. I, uh, this would be done, and I'd be uh, in the backyard uh, barbecuing. <laughs> um, so anyway, and then I'm going to throw a second hatch through it. So I'm starting just a little bit into the line, like, like not really at the base. And I, I do a real thin line like this, and it will give it a little bit of like a moray pattern, meaning like a little bit of a blur in there. It's a nice effect, though. And then if I if I erase this, I'd have to wait a second. But you'd see this would be a really, really nice fade. And then you could even um, come back this way and, uh, you know, like like do this kind of have, there was a few lines they had here. I nor, normally I would probably double check like on a photocopy or something like that to see what exactly was underneath there. But anyway, and then, so he's got a few, well, I, I do, I 
again, his edging or whatever you want to call it, like indication of form is usually pretty like graphic, real hard lines. Um, I went in more scribbly. So like right here, even I could go thin, really thin, a little thicker, and then have like, this is where it's going to start to get into the black. And then I'll, I'll, um, I'll fill this in really quick. The ink I'm using is Ultra Draw. Really, really old ink um, in terms of like like uh, the age of the ink that I'm using. It's it's almost mud. And then what I do is I just put some water in it. So it's about one-tenth water, uh, one um, or whatever, nine-tenths old ink that's super black. Um, if I was going to fill in large areas of black, I'm just going to hit these really quick so you can see the... Um, um, you know, whatever the, the area and then I'll put, I'll put like feathering. Let me just, I'm going to wash my brush really quick. So the water that I use is dirty ink water. <laughs> I'm low fi yo. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't really get like super finicky with all that stuff. And, and I play it down only because I don't want people to be concerned about that. I'd be, I would be more, app to just recommend that you become a super badass inker in terms of your control of the tools and thought process behind it and then worry about all the um minutia of tools you could you know so those are real fine feathering lines um and I'll, I'll show you really quick how to do feathering lines they, they he didn't have feathering lines here i'm going to show you so what i do is i the brush has got a real good point right now. I can see it. If the brush isn't pointy, what I'll do is I'll go like this. I just kind of like twist it and then hit it just to like, I'm basically in my mind, like I'm taking the, the little pieces of hair and spinning them around each other. And then I get the brush to go the direction that I want. You know what I mean? Like, um, if you were, if you were taking a piece of clay, you know, you thin it out, and then you want it to go a certain direction. Okay, so now if I'm doing feathering lines, I, this is still a little damp, but um, I talk about form a lot on my uh, Patreon channel, but so Batman's thigh is a cylinder that goes like this. So I'm gonna have my, my rendering lines curving with the form. The thigh, if, uh, if you had a wireframe, would go like this. It's these are this is the direction, and, and this goes for pencilers too. If you're penciling this stuff, you want you know the stuff should be going around the form. This is a form, 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 form. You know, it's not flat. If you start putting like lines going like this, you're going to completely flatten out your piece. So, all right, now let me do these filly lines. I don't even remember if there's ink on my brush. But yeah, Inktober is a really, really cool thing. And it's cool because it gets people off their ass drawing more than anything. It's cool that like inking gets a little attention, but so thin to thick. Those first lines were kind of crappy to be honest. Um, but yeah, so I'm just, I'm, I'm going as light as I can. And then I push down light as I can. I push down light as I can. I push down light as I can. And then you want to kind of create a little teepee. I don't get super like anal about it anymore. Um, I just, I think I'm not a huge fan of like super sterile inks. So generally speaking, I like to nail it, but I don't really worry about like every line looking identical, but it, it's definitely a style that's out there and has been out there for a long time and people do respond to it. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. If, if you want to have that look, um, ultimately for me, I didn't really find that it was completely necessary that I, th I think that I, I tight enough as it is. And what's weird is I, I really actually get like, Oh, your inks are so clean more than I would think, honestly, because, because, uh, I think that the overall finish of my inks is clean, but, um, I'm definitely not, uh, super, uh, you know, anal about, uh, the line thing. So we'll do, we'll do one more little run of the, um, thing, and then I'm going to show you a couple other rendering techniques really quick. So again, nice and thin, I'm going in as light as I can, and then I'm going to try to get thick right when it goes into the black. Nice and thin into the black, nice and thin into the black. And and you want to control the length of your lines. I wasn't doing it so good there. A couple of them got a little longer than I wanted because um, I'm jabbering. But, um, yeah, you know, it's like 
like I'm gonna try to hit all of these lines that I do the same length as Ryan's and they're starting to get thicker then you want them to blend in and then um, I'll do these I've got a cat literally sitting behind me now she jumped in my chair and she's like spinning around circles behind me so I'm like I'm a little distracted what are you doing Oh, you want to look out the window? All right. I don't remember what was up here, but we'll say that it was a feather line that went like this. Okay, well, what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to push the brush down to the side a little bit, and I'm going to go like that. Do you see that? Push the brush down like I'm going to do a feathering stroke, and I flick it. And you can get these little... Um, uh, they almost look like a calligraphy pen type line. So th those are pretty effective for areas like this. You got to keep your wrist really, really firm when you do it. So, okay. And then let me, I'm going to grab uh, a Copic multi-liner. So, so what ends up happening, like you can see that a brush can move through things pretty quickly. Like it's less sculpting of lines meaning like like with a thin pen you have to sort of mimic the line weight and so what what ends up happening is you're kind of having to draw more with the line like if i want to do a feathering line with a copic multi-liner i i have to sort of like create the line and then flick it create the line and flick it and what i'm doing i'm just drawing a little teepee a little like a little v that i shade in and i flick it little little V and I flick it so you can get really nice feathering and it's I'll have people look at hair that I do sometimes and they'll go oh man that's like awesome brush feathering and it's like I'm using you know like a pen not necessarily a Copic multi-liner but but you know a pen of some sort um, but the same thing here like I can mimic um, a hunt 102 and and blip and blop and do all these things I'm just drawing all this stuff but I know what I want it to look like that's kind of the thing and it, it will be very very difficult for me to cover every sort of like angle on on uh using different tools for different effects but but again because i know what it would look like if i would ink this with a hunt 102 i can recreate that with um this and in fact i was psycho enough back um uh you know well i still am uh i'll do ink splatter with a with a tech pen and literally just like you, if you saw it, you would literally think it was like someone took a toothbrush and like flicked it all. And I'll even do drips. I'll draw drips and little anomalies, like spurred lines. You know, like if uh, sometimes ink will hit the paper and it kind of uh, bleeds a little bit. Like I'm that crazy. So, um, you know, but I know what I want it to look like. So, so anyway, let's do, we'll do a little rendering right here. So this is going to be kind of more Travis E, Laniel U, Olivier Coipel. Um, that kind of thing. So Ryan's got like a little bit of a hatch here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pen. I'm going to start out a little further than he did because what you're doing is you're creating a, 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 a change of value. And what that means is, is light to dark. So I'm going to try to flick my thinnest line and then a little thicker, a little thicker and a little thicker. And they're starting to get closer together and it's a little thicker little thicker and and then it fades there's a fade I'll hit this little thing here um and then uh but anyway uh so okay so so here what I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna start up higher than Ryan and what I'm gonna do is I'm I'm creating a form so I've got these lines those the going like this and then what I'm going to do is I'm I'm creating like a spherical shape because what this is is this is a chunk of anatomy that's a 3D form and the the form goes like this so it goes up and over up and over and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these lines wrap into that form so that I really push that muscle up this is a lump uh, you know, and then it starts to go into here and then it lumps, well, kind of goes up and then it goes in where the crevice of the chest is. So I'll actually, I'll start it right about here generally. And then I'm wrapping these around and I even, uh, that line actually was off. 
it won't be a big deal, but <clears throat> the where I wanted it to go, it didn't really hit it. But so, and then I did those taper lines where I again I created like the little teepee and I flicked it. Trade secret. Um, and uh, oh, it was these, yeah. So, so the blip lop, like, like it's it's kind of a hunt 102 move, which, which, um, I like Sal Regla, if you remember that name from like Wildstorm, it's like a lot of people use it. I'm sure Scott Williams uses it, but it's sort of this thing where it's like you've got the thick line and it goes thin and then it kind of ends with a blop. So what, what I do when I do really fine art is I'm still using that same technique. It's just much smaller. So I can do this one. This is a 0.1. It won't go super tiny, but um, it's still the same idea. It's like the blip, flick, and then the blop. Blip, and then blop. So I'm going to end it there for today. I'll do another inking video for Inktober. Um in a few days. I want to thank all my Patreons for their support. Honestly, this was going to be a Patreon exclusive, but I feel like, you know what I mean? Like, like uh, YouTube is where all my patrons pretty much found me, I think, generally speaking. And so it's like, everyone can enjoy this. I think it's important. And again, I'm not a big fan of people that, that present things as secrets. It's like, I, I would rather share the information and have everybody get better. And then, I get better because the talent pool is deeper and more competitive, but I'm, I like competition. I'm not scared of it. <laughs> so, all right, have a great day. Smash the like, subscribe. If you haven't, you could check out Patreon and uh, have a great day and get your inktober on. All right, later.